Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening again, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, for the record, we have four of our five council members present this evening with Councilwoman Reem absent. Our first action tonight is our agenda approval. Council members, are there any modifications to the agenda as printed? All right, we will move forward with the public agenda. First up, we have public announcements, and it's a really, ex well, they're all really excited public announcements, but um, we are very excited to have Ari here tonight to to walk us through the newly released uh, website. So welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm so excited to be here to walk through a couple of the exciting new features of our website. So on a front glance, you can see on the screens here that this is the new site. We're so excited that this launched last Thursday. Um, before I jump in to talk about a couple of the great finite details, I just want you to notice that we now have a pop-up section to sign up for all of our e-newsletters and subscribe, which is really exciting. So that includes project updates, message from the mayor, parks uh, information, all the good stuff. All right, so essentially what we talked about a little over seven months ago was our primary focus with the website. And it was to revise it, we wanted to make sure it was efficient, a communicative tool for everybody. So, you know, when we update it, we can provide new web features, we can provide updated content really easily. Um, so what you'll notice here, um, and I'm sure all of you guys have been testing it out, is that it's a mobile-friendly site with adjustable screen resolution. So now our site fits smartphones, tablets, laptops, and other devices. And we're now able to track our website data and analytics through Google Analytics, which is really exciting. So now all of our web-based decisions are based solely on this new feature. So we can make more educated decisions before we put stuff on the web. So I'm going to take you through a couple of our um, really new exciting features. So as I'm sure you notice, other than the excellent video in the background, which we are one of the only Minnesota cities that do this, um, we have a huge search function. And one of the reasons why we um, really honed in on this search-centric website model was because most of the people that come to our website search for our stuff because we have a lot of really great content on there. So what's really exciting about this is it's upfront and in your face, but also we've been doing a lot of metadata in the background to make sure that it's really efficient when people start to use it. Um, you'll also notice that our top six pages that people visit are now giant buttons. So things like projects, parks and recreation, permits and licensing, they're really easy to find on our new site. Before, some of those pages were a little hidden, and now they're kind of just right up for people to grab them and click on them. We also have our In the Spotlight section, our news section, and our calendar of events. Before, they weren't really separated, and we felt it was really important that um, any user can kind of get one of the three top items that they need when they come to our web page. And, of course, our cool new quick look, which we can update at any time with any amount of information that the city staff feels we need to share with people. So one of the cool features that I want to show you guys that's new, too, is um, our new projects button. So thanks to engineering and GIS, we have a really excellent, when it loads, projects map that we can show everybody. So before we had our projects kind of scattered across the web page and now they're one they're in one easy location for everybody to use. So um, now all of our projects are listed by type or jurisdiction, which is really exciting. So that's kind of a new feature that we feel is going to be really beneficial to a lot of our web visitors. Another really great page that I'm really excited to talk about is our voting section. So we also have as soon as it loads, a precinct map that um, residents can visit to figure out where they need to vote and any voting information. And we've um, actually spent the time making sure that uh, we have an entire section on our website devoted to it. So it's easy to find, it's findable in multiple spots, and it has all of the voting and election information on one page. Another exciting feature is our um, what we're calling kind of our department home pages. And I'm going to show Parks as an example here. A lot of our home pages now um, 
will allow direct access to all department related news, events, and messaging. You can see with parks we have still have their like banner messaging here, but also it just provides a sense of their top favorites that people like to visit and it's easier to find for people instead of trying to search our website. So if you have a concern in a park, you want to reserve a facility, or the most important, you want to sign up for programming, that's all easily accessible to you. And of course, I kind of mentioned at the beginning, we had Gov Delivery, which is our new like e-newsletter source. So that's a little bit easier to subscribe to those email messages and they're faster and um, kind of a lot us a better like marketing and um, you know it's digitally more appealing to people. So we're really excited about that. So kind of some final thoughts with this. The website's a living document, and we're really proud of what we accomplished here, but we can't wait to use, utilize this in so many other projects in the future. So this truly is a new, improved hub of information for so many, and we're really excited to keep this living document alive. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, so if you are already signed up for email blasts, like messages from the mayor or city updates, do you have to re-sign up for emails, or did that all get transferred over? Thank you for your question. Uh, mayor and council, you don't. So okay. we actually um, took all of our e-subscribe lists, and we transfer them to our new account. So the only thing that people will see when they've subscribed is a new look. Any other questions, council? Well... I don't have any questions, but and I know we've responded to you last week, and um, but I just want to say publicly, thank you so much for your hard work for the last seven months. This has been uh, a long time goal to get this website, you know, get a new website and get it update updated. I think we recognize the importance for communication as one of our strategic priorities. Um, and this tool is where people go to get information about the city and activities and projects. And I really think the way that it's been laid out, where you're hitting the key areas that people are looking for, it's easy to find that information. I mean, the searchability function is fantastic. Um, the features are, I mean, it's beautiful, but really the functionality is key, and we're not having to dig through layers and layers of data to try to find what we're looking for. And... Um, I just really appreciate your and your team's hard work on um, bringing this to light and having it released uh, ahead of schedule, which is fantastic. Um, it's something that uh, is just going to be a, a huge benefit to our community at large. So thank you very much for your hard work. I, um, this project is near and dear to my heart, so I really appreciate the, the hard work and the effort that you put in. It's just it, just exceptional job. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Ari. Well done. All right. Next is our consent agenda. Tonight we have consent agenda items D1 through 10. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by city council and will be recorded as a single motion based on staff recommendation. There will be no separate discussion of these items. Are there any items that the council would like to discuss separately? If not, may I get a motion to approve consent agendas D1 through 10? Um, Madam Mayor, I'll make the motion to uh, approve consent agenda items D1 through D10. Thank you, Councilman McDonald. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Schubert. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries 4-0. Uh, next, we have visitor presentations. Visitor presentations are included with each of our regularly scheduled council meetings. Anyone wishing to address the council on a matter that is not specifically on the agenda may step to the podium. Please provide your name and address for the record, and then please address the council. You will have five minutes to present your item. If your request includes an action from either staff or council, please complete a citizen action request form so that we may appropriately follow up with your request. However, if you are simply making a comment with no required action, a form does not need to be completed. Please know that we do not take up items that are brought forward during our visitor presentations at our meeting tonight. Uh, and lastly, if you have any handouts to share with council, please hand them to our staff members. Uh, we have one scheduled tonight, uh, Center Point Energy Community Safety Grant. Chief, I think you're going to introduce this, please. Good evening, Mayor Council. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, we do have um, an opportunity, and on your consent agenda, you did approve a donation by from Centerpoint, the uh, Centerpoint Energy Community Safety Grant. Um, this is an annual grant process. Uh, we've we've benefited from this grant as a city several times over the last eight years that I've been here, and we've purchased things like uh, gas monitoring equipment and thermal imaging cameras. It is a 50% um, matching grant, and this year we were awarded a uh, grant of $1,500 from Centerpoint to replace our ice rescue specialized ice rescue equipment. Um, I would like to call Jeff Brigaman and Bill Kahlberg up from Centerpoint Energy to give a presentation about the grant and potentially issue a check for it. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> potentially. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Cosmos, thank you for having us here. Um, I'm Bill Kahlberg and Jeff Brigaman. Um, I actually take care of our construction and maintenance crews that you would see out and around. Um, Jeff handles a bunch of um, our Home Service Plus crews that are in your home. Right. fixing uh, your furnaces and, and such. So um, we have a large footprint center point energy down in Minnesota, or in Minnesota, Texas, Indiana, Ohio, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and uh, Louisiana. And uh, we've done about 1,288 grants um, so far about the last 15 years for a little over two and a half million dollars. So our safety is as important as uh, Chief Johnson's safety um, with his folks. So we are here to present um, Don with a check for $1,500 um, for his ice commander suits for water and um, ice rescue. Mm -hmm. Don, thank you, and we appreciate your safety as much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chief. <laughs> Are there any other visitor presentations this evening? All right. Uh, next, we will move to our public hearing. And Mr. Howley, is that you? Madam Mayor, yes, it is. Um, what we've got for this agenda item is essentially um, a routine approval of a final plat a project, a subdivision, but the public hearing has to do with the request to vacate an existing drainage and utility easement. So that's the portion of the public hearing. The development itself had its public hearing at the Planning Commission, you know, quite a while ago. So, uh, but we're, we're packaged them together as one agenda item just for streamlining process. So we're talking about Cunningham Second Edition, which is at 855 Pleasant View Road. Tonight we're going to consider approval of final plat, development contract, and the construction plans, and then the vacation of existing public drainage and utility easement, which is where the public hearing comes into play. The project location um, is shown in red here and zoomed in on the right-hand side. It's up off of Pleasant View Road, east of Powers and west of uh, Lotus Lake area. An overview of the project, um, it's a subdivision creating two single-family lots. Its preliminary plat was approved at the Planning Commission on April 19th. It was brought to you guys on uh, May 9th uh, for preliminary plat approval. Since that time, there's been some minor changes to the plans and plat, which address some of staff's uh, conditions, but there are still a number of conditions that still apply, um, which kind of happens from time to time, nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, 
direct lot access is via a private street built in accordance with city code. Um, they plan on installing a new fire hydrant, which would be public, across Pleasant View Road. And they plan on installing a private stormwater treatment BMP for uh, the hard surface that's added by the new homes and private drive. So um, for the public hearing purposes, um, Pat Cunningham edition um, was the kind of the, the underlying lot, if you will, that's being subdivided. And as part of that plat, there were kind of the customary drainage and utility easements along the property lines. Um, those are what's highlighted in yellow. The new plat is over here. It's in red. And you can see the old plat here. So the public hearing is to um, vacate those easements, which are needed to be done to align with the new lots. Um, there's no utilities in these easements, so it's, it's just a, a matter of process at this point. So the public hearing, it's required any time a public easement is vacated. Um, staff has not received any public comments uh, concerning the, the vacation of this uh, utility easement, and it's recommended uh, that you do so. Um, so after you open the public hearing and hear testimony, uh, then you can move forward and, we'll and you can uh, make a motion to uh, do these four things, one of which is... Uh, um, a resolution which is required for the vacation of the easement, but then the customary approval of final plat, approve the development contract, and approve the plans and specs, as with any subdivision that comes before you. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Council, are there any questions? I just have one, Mr. Howley. So mm -hmm. I'll open the public hearing for the vacation of the easement. Once we get through that, then it comes back. Are, is there going to be any further conversation about the overall final plat or any review of that information? Or are we just, I know we've talked about it at a previous meeting, but it, I mean, well, we have an opportunity. Is there anything more that has changed since the last meeting or not? Um, Madam Mayor, Council. If you move forward with the recommended motions tonight, that nothing more will come back to you formally as a body. Mm -hmm. You do have to sign the plat mylar. Right. But um, the, the applicant, the developer, does have to meet all of the conditions that are there, and the final plat won't get released for recording until all the conditions are met. Right. So that's the checks and balance um, to make sure that any issues are addressed. Okay. Um, the things that have been um, advanced from the last time we were here in May till now is, you know, kind of some minor stuff, housekeeping stuff. Nothing about um, the, the larger concerns about the, the drainage and the BMPs. Yeah. So to my knowledge, they're still working through the details of that. I believe they're on the right course. I don't think there's any cause for concern. Um, we're in contact with them from water resources point of view. And uh, they just have to work out the, the finer details, but nothing um, that is causing staff any kind of major concerns. Okay. But this will be the last time the council is hearing anything on this. Okay. I do have one question as it relates to the location of the driveway. I know it's probably the only, I mean, it's where it is. Um, it also kind of sits hidden on a, right before you go into a curve and you come out of a curve. Is there any way to put any hidden driveway signs or something along those lines with three now potentially three properties coming out of that driveway? It's, um, it's where people are picking up speed and um, hitting a curve at pretty quick clip uh, out of the safety for, is that something that the resident would ask for is it something that we should be proactive do even people do hidden sign driveways anymore um it's just a it's just a little bit of a sketchy in and out especially exiting with cars coming headed west i guess or east um madam mayor council so hidden driveway signs um those are used and allowed um Generally, what happens is an engineering review is done where you have a speed limit of a road and you've got certain sight lines that 
that a driver should be able to see clear of any obstructions. Mm -hmm. And there's distances based on the speed that you're traveling. And, in, and, the, and the formula says, well, you should have an X amount of time before you see an obstruction and slow down before you, know, you, you can avoid the obstruction. If, for example, a driveway is located that um, doesn't meet that requ requirement, then you would use a strategy such as a hidden driveway sign. And we've got a number of those around town. We just right. put one up a couple months ago, actually, in a different neighborhood. So I'm going to assume, and maybe that's bad of me, but that that was reviewed as part of this application. Okay. Um, but at a minimum, I can bring it back to the team and the Traffic Safety Committee, and we can review whether it's appropriate to do. Um, and if it were, we we, we can install it. I mean, right. the city can install it. We don't need neighbors to do it. We, we don't need to task it with the developer. It's, it's a relatively minor thing. Right. So I can say that the engineering and the traffic safety committee will review it. And if it needs one, we'll certainly put one up. I can't sit here today to say one is warranted or not. I just okay. don't have the information. In All right. front of me. And I don't know who it protects more, the residents that are driving on that road or the, the people that live, you know, potential or the future residents of, you know, of that driveway. But um, it's just something that might be worth a second look. You bet. We will do that. Um, if there are no other questions at this point, um, I will open the public hearing. So I hereby open the public hearing. Please state your name and address for the record. You may come forward. Sure. I don't know if this works. Um, um, Allison, could we take the over? Um, my name is Pamela Legrand, and I'm a resident of the Fox Chase development. Um, I live at um, 564 or 6540 Fox Path. And uh, not that we have any opposition to the development at all, but rather, um, when the development was proposed, I did come into the city to speak with the water engineer about the water issues that we have in Fox Chase. And I thought when this um, uh, notice came out that I would come and have a chance to just very briefly um, let the council and the mayor know about what it is that we face and why it really is important for the developer to do everything they can to really deal with stormwater. So this is the Cunningham property right up here. And the Fox Chase development comes in here and goes around. And so I'm speaking um, probably more for some of the homeowners here rather than necessarily for um, my own house uh, as much. Nevertheless, um, when Fox Chase was developed, the engineering uh, was done and um, calculated stormwater based on 1980 standards for 100 and 500 year rains, um, and actually didn't take into account that subsequent to Fox Chase being developed, Vineland Addition was developed. And Vineland Addition, all of their stormwater was um, attached to the stormwater drainage for Fox Path, which was never engineered to handle um, the additional 14 and a half acres of Vineland Addition. And so part of the significant cost uh, overrun that happened a few years ago was me talking with the, the engineers when they redid the streets for Fox Chase to try to deal with the, the um, stormwater issues. We were actually having, during big rainstorms, we were actually having like little fountains coming up out of the stormwater drainage during big storms. It was rather dramatic. And so when I saw that another development, albeit relatively small, was gonna happen essentially uphill, and you can see how incredibly steep the terrain is here. It's just <clears throat> insane. Um, and to just give you a little background, um, our property, which is at this end, we've had to spend um, just shy of $100,000 since we've lived here. 
um, redoing and creating additional um, drainage systems and retention walls with more advanced drainage systems behind them to deal with the water just coming out of the side of the hill on our property. And so when I noticed that they wanted to make two stormwater retention ponds right up here, I just wanted to kind of make the case and plead with the developer that they, they really use the best data they have for current 100 year rains and whatever to make sure that the stormwater retention ponds are deep enough um, and robust enough to not pose any threat because these homes here all have mm, some of them 12 to 15 foot retaining walls holding the property up and they're right below where these stormwater retention ponds will be and so again not opposing the development just saying can we work this so that we really minimize um, any effect to the already somewhat strained stormwater drainage system that we have. Um, I guess that's all I really have to present. Um, I'm certainly willing, I've done a lot of research on this. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Um, I just thank you for the opportunity to share this. Great. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yes, please come forward. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Ann Miller, 6561 Fox Path. I've been in the house for 30 years. <clears throat> I personally knew uh, Mr. Cunningham. He was in my house and I was in his. Um, as the water, the groundwater comes within six inches of the surface in the whole area at any time of the year. It even comes that close in the winter. I too have had to spend thousands of dollars uh, remedying water situations. Our development went, Fox Chase went through three developers. Even though I'm across the street from Pam and on near the top of the hill, I um, am a cut lot because the lot <clears throat> on Fox Court and my, my lot was cut to make a street. And that's why we have houses that are backwards <laughs> on the street as you drive in because the road was supposed to be in front of, on the other side of those houses, but it was all changed. So at any rate, <clears throat> and many other people in the neighborhood have had problems too. So that's why I'm here. And my question is, interesting that you're gonna put a fire hydrant across the street from this property, because I believe Pleasant View is a connector street. Is that right, Mr. Howley? As if I you know. could just ask the questions and then we'll oh okay after the by the by the you. by the uh, state I think it's identified at Pleasant View as a connector street and therefore I know you've got the five year plan and I've read it all <clears throat> and um, I, I I the street has to be widened and it has we have to have a path every single access point from the park on the one end all the way out to Powers is a blind driveway. And Fox Chase, that's our only way in and out is Pleasant View. And so <clears throat> we deserve to have a path. And so I'm just curious, will the path be on this side of that property or the other side? Or is it gonna go back and forth when we finally do have one? I don't know. But I think that is something that strongly needs to be considered. And I know the monies will come from the state, the county, and the city when the road is improved. Thank you. Are there any other comments tonight? Uh, Tara Clark, 6401 Fox Path. Um, I think as we've watched the development go in, one of the things that we're concerned about is the water. We are... <laughs> We are the house the with the 15-foot retaining walls in the front. And so that development butts right up to the back of us and all that water comes right down our hill. And so um, ensuring that, that we've struggled with the retaining walls, water running all winter, 
every time it thaws. Um, the house is, is pretty drainage safe, but the retaining walls are affected by it. And so ensuring that that drainage is, um, is well taken care of is important to us. Great, thank you, appreciate your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? All right, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to council. Um, Mr. Howley, a, a couple questions that were raised. Uh, I'll get to the water issue and a, a concern in a, in a minute, but in terms of um, Ms. Miller's comments about Pleasant View and reconstruction, trails and fire hydrant. If you can address those, that would be great, please. Certainly, Madam Mayor Council. Um, Pleasant View Road is identified as a, a collector street. Collector, not connector, but same, I think that's what she means. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an MSA route. It is in need of reconstruction. Um, it is now just entering our five-year plan. So the, the line is getting drawn on the map, which we're super excited about because it's in dire need, right? So. Um, Will the roadway be widened? We will build it to standards as much as we can. If we have limited right of way, who knows, right? We need willing property owners to, you know, build wider things in narrow areas. So we got to work through all that. We haven't identified how wide the road is going to be. We haven't identified what side of the street the, the future trail is, but we do know that we do want a trail there. It's shown in our kind of our guide plans to put a trail all along Pleasant View Road because one is needed. What that looks like, where it's gonna go, we, we, don't, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, a decent point to make sure that we don't put a fire hydrant in the way of where a trail might go. We might get it wrong even if we spend five hours looking at it, right? So we'll, we'll do our best to make sure when that hydrant gets installed that it's reasonably not gonna get impacted by a trail or a future road widening but we can't say with 100% certainty that it wouldn't. But the cost of that project, we're gonna be moving lots and lots of hydrants, right? And it's five years, six years in the future, so um, we might not just have enough information, but um, it's a valid point. Um, we do want a trail, so we have the same goals. Um, we absolutely have the same goals the city does and the residents do, and we're gonna to try to find a way to make that happen. Great, thank you. Any questions in terms of the trail and road projections. Um, Ms. Miller, Miller, I know you've been an advocate for Pleasant View for a number of years and safety and speeds and um, sidewalks. I appreciate you coming um, and bringing those back for, um, forward again. In terms of, um, I just know you as Dr. Pam. I, I apologize for <laughs> not remembering your last name. Um, um, at our last council meeting, we asked extensive questions about the drainage because all of us are familiar with Pleasant View. We understand the steep grade and the impact to um, to uh, Fox Chase and right below that development, you know, not only the water drainage, but just any, you know, the additional runoff, uh, the construction and the impact of the houses below. It was something that the council asked extensive questions about because we share your concern and we know that there has been, um, and I will get to Mr. Howley a question in a second, but I wanna address your, your comments tonight. Um, we do know that there has been, you know, issues on your road and the, um, the the sewer not being able to keep up with the runoff. And so we're familiar with that. Um, we've talked about it before this was a development that we were, were even considering. So we're very familiar with it. And then when the development came forward, it was something that we wanted to make sure was addressed appropriately um, with this development because we know the impact that is gonna have on, you know, would have on your homes. So. Mr. Howley, you know, in terms of reading the report since the last time, I, I think the bigger concern is that northern um, water, re the retention area. Could you just talk to the sizing and the appropriate sizing of that for the runoff, please? Certainly, uh, Mayor Council. So it's been about 10 years since the new rainfall standards have been released. We call them Atlas 14. So. The old subdivisions previous to that went on old outdated data, rainfall data, and it, they did that way for many, many, many years because there wasn't any new updated data. So we have this new updated data, can say with 100% certainty that the, the, the developer's engineer 
is using the latest data. Um, our staff checks for that. The watershed district staff checks for that. It's with 100% certainty we're using today's standards. Um, our goal, similar to the trail and the road, as previously said, our goal is to mitigate offsite drainage impacts. That was our number one. This project, if anything else, it was a, a water resources project because it's just a little tiny little subdivision, right? A lot of time, a lot of hours spent, and they're not quite there yet. That's why I said we have some open conditions that they need to solve to make sure that our drainage staff is comfortable with the design. I think they're close. I don't think things are going to wildly change. Um, but the things they design for um, limit the amount of water runoff that's leaving the site as precondition, right? So you size it big enough to account for the additional water generated because of the, the pavements and the rooftops. That's why you put in a pond. You, you slow the water down and you, you release it very slowly so that the same amount of water in a rate control perspective is leaving as before we show it. Um, so it's kind of accounted for, and that's just traditional design. I can't speak to the, the, the original Fox Path subdivision and that design. I have no idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, groundwater, shallow groundwater, it's all over Chanass, and everybody deals with it, right? This, this, this project and the improvements they're making really will have no material impact on groundwater elevation. These are these are um, filtration basins, not infiltration basins. We would love to put more water into the ground because that's a great BMP for stormwater. Soils don't allow it. It's tight clay soil, so we're not going to be able to put any more water into the ground. Um, so it's collected and treated and released at the surface. So um, shallow groundwater is unfortunate and everywhere in Chan, and we all deal with it, but this project really shouldn't really affect that at all. It's the surface water that the discharge point and how it gets from the BMP down the hill that we are, you know, immensely concerned about and that our focus of our review has been focused on that. And I'd say we've been, had a pretty tough review. Mm -hmm. And the watershed district, too, they're doing the same thing. So we feel pretty confident that, um, you know, they're, they're doing a, an appropriate stormwater design. Again, they're not quite there yet, but they're going to get there. And I recall at the last meeting when we were asking this question, you thought that it potentially could improve the water runoff on that site by having these? Um, Madam Mayor Council, improve in the terms of, well, water quality. Mm -hmm. It should be improved because okay. um, cool. you're treating the water through the BMP. Um, the location of where the water is being directed onto the hill, mm -hmm. um, I can't say here for, for, for sure because I don't know it in detail enough if it's a better location than what it currently is, because right now it's just kind of all sheet flows down the hill, right? And it finds little gullies. Mm -hmm. The new BMP is going to kind of put that water strategically where it should go. So it could be improved, but I guess I can't sit here today and say that it's in a better spot. But those are the things we look at, right? We don't want water discharging in a spot we don't want it to go. That's part of the review. Right. So I think that's been appropriately looked at. Um, but water quality should be better. Right. And then last question in terms of the retaining wall. Um, how does the drainage affect the retaining wall and the uh, strength of a retaining wall? The um, What word am I looking for? Integrity. Integrity, yes, of the retaining wall. Thank you. Um, Mayor Council, um, water and retaining walls don't mix well. It's pretty obvious. Retaining walls are usually constructed with... Uh, Number one, swales on top to divide the, divide, divert the water around. Number two, they put drainage aggregate behind the retaining wall with drain tile at the bottom so that the water can filter in and get around so it doesn't surcharge the wall itself. That's, that's why you build and design retaining walls. Um, we, I guess we don't know the, the actual construction of said retaining wall. We assume it was done correctly. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the location of the water coming out of the BMP and, and where that is compared to where these retaining walls are, I, I, I don't have a map that shows me where that is, so I, can't, I guess I can't really comment. But my previous comment stands in that we wouldn't purposely put water right into a wall, right? That's not good design practice. So the review would have kind of reviewed for that. So again, not any more water is going there. So in theory, the retaining wall shouldn't get overwhelmed with additional water that isn't there today. Okay, 
Thank you. So obviously it's a concern. So I know that there's, and just reading the report, there's a few more things that have to be checked. And I know that um, uh, Watershed has been very involved and are very, even have stricter rules than, um, than the city. So, um, but it's a concern. And obviously with the residents sharing their concern. So appreciate you following that closely. Uh, any other questions or comments from council? If not, um, Mr. Holly, do you want to put up the motion, please? Unless somebody can pull it up on their iPad. Thank you. Would anyone like to make a motion? Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, that n number one, uh, the Chanhassen uh, City Council adopts a resolution approving the vacation of a portion of public drainage and utility easements within the Pat Cunningham Platte as shown in Exhibit A. Number two, uh, that the Council approves the final plat for Cunningham Second Edition, creating two single-family lots subject to the conditions of approval. Number three, that the council approves the development contract for Cunningham second edition, and number four, that the council approves the plans and specifications for Cunningham second edition. Thank you, Councilman McDonald. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Campion. With a valid motion and a second, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, we have no general business. Any council presentations this evening? Anything on the correspondence discussion? No, Mayor. I have one real quick question. Um, in terms of the letter from Mediacom, is there going to be future action from Council in terms of the franchise agreement with Mediacom? Mayor and Council, there will be, um, although not likely in the near future, we'll be working with Brian Grogan, who is our telecom attorney, to engage in um, some negotiation prior to that coming to Council. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the clarification. Um, with no other items or questions on the correspondence, uh, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, just to remind council that we'll be returning to the uh, Fountain Conference room to continue our um, items from our work session. So with that, may I get a motion? Excuse me, Madam Oh, Mayor. sure, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I've got a question on the correspondence. It's the letter for, from the Met Council where they're, sure. uh, uh, again, assuming uh, population and those things. I know in the past there's been issues with their... Uh, Estimates. Where do we stand uh, with this particular estimate? Do we think it's uh, close enough for us, or are we going to challenge it? Um, Mayor and Council, the Community Development Director can speak to this more in depth if you like, but overall we do have concerns that the household number is smaller than we believe it is, and so um, the Community Development staff is currently looking into this and considering whether it's worth an appeal or not. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure someone was looking at it because... I know they're not very good with numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Councilman McDonald. Um, <laughs> and thank you for your sense of humor. Um, <laughs> again, we'll return to the Fountain Conference Room. Uh, may I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Councilman McDonald. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Schubert. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries for zero. We are adjourned.